Uh, I'm going to read my remarks unless you want to have a slumber party and be here forever. Um, so the application for the Caring for the Future Award asks applicants for a brief statement that describes their current and future scholarly and pedagogical work and how the applicant represents a, tra a traditionally unrepresented group. Of course, I knew I was el el eligible for the award. I'm a graduate student. I was a first time attendant of the conference, and I'm brown. But when it came to sitting down and writing my statement, I struggled. Am I really deserving of this award? Just by looking at my face, you don't really know what the hell's going on. Um, I've used this racial amb ambiguity to my advantage, drawing upon my brownness when it suits me and walking it back when it doesn't. So when I sat to write my statement, I really felt a great deal of shame, a chameleon running roughshod with his race. But, uh, so I enlisted others for help. I turned to my friend Michaela Avila Vila, an MFA student at Florida State whose posts on Facebook and Twitter I've always admired and how she treats her racial experience in the South. It was through our conversations that helped me come to terms with the experience of being something of a chameleon. Michaela laid it out pretty plainly. You're not underrepresented. You're not represented at all. And she was right. Up until the summer of 2015, Florida State's rec comp program only had one Asian American accepted and enrolled in the program, and that was me. So we can go to the first image. Thank you. So these are my parents, Regina and Tony Sirio. Next image. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, these are my two brothers and me. Uh, when my mom would uh, call out our names, it would sound like one word, TJ, Mikey, Joey. Now Anthony, <laughs> Mikey, and Joe. The next image. So my mom comes from a pretty big Italian family. She, uh, her family, her grandparents migrated from Italy to the States at the turn of the 20th century. And my dad is from the Philippines. His parents migrated here in the 1950s. You can go to the next image. So growing up, my mom stayed home to raise us while my dad worked. When she had to run an errand, she'd have to drag three boys with her. Luckily, she claims that uh, she would get compliments on how well we behaved. Um, so there was one time, um, one time this happened that was that always kind of irked my mom. She retells the story every once in a while at Christmas. Uh, we were at a Walmart around Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, where we lived at the time. A woman approached my mom to again compliment her on how well behaved the three of us were. But then the woman turns to my mom and asks, "What agency did you go through?" My mom's like, "What? What agency?" And the lady goes, uh, "What? What adoption agency did you go through?" And my mom goes, "Oh." My husband is Filipino. Granted, the lady was very embarrassed, but my mom still tells the story over and over again. So oddly enough, FSU's rec comp program did accept an MA student in 2015 whose parents were also Italian and Filipino, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, her name is Christina Giruso, and she explains that it really isn't that weird because you couldn't find two more Catholic countries in Italy in the Philippines. Um, so there's a picture of us, if you want to click next. There's, that was us at last year's Computers and Writing. Uh, so while we were in Rochester last year, a few grad graduate students from Florida State, including Christine and me, went out for a restaurant by the canal. We were seated in a crowded room after a few minutes chatting. I turned to Christina and I asked if she noticed anything interesting about the room, and she knew exactly what I was talking about. Of course, she said, we're the only brown people in the room. One of my friends sitting with us overheard our conversation and asked, and asked do you really think about this every time you walk into a room? Well, I say, it's not the first thing you look for, but it, you kind of pick up on these things. It kind of registers. She says back, I've never really thought to pay attention to that kind of thing. So sometimes being brown in a room full of white people sneaks up on you when you least expect it. Uh, a short, innocuous co comment can make you feel like you're under a microscope. You might find yourself on a farm for your partner's family reunion, like I was in 2011. You'd walk up to a couple of her relatives, and she'd introduce you saying, hi, Grandpa, this is Joe, my Asian boyfriend. And then you'd think, well, my mom, you know, my mom never called my dad her Asian husband. He was always just her husband. Uh, so then, you know, a lingering stare from someone across the room would make you, your face flush, and you'd think, what the hell am I doing here? Um, we can go to the next. Yeah, there you go. So my brothers and I, of course, love Jackie Chan movies, and we watched a lot of Hook, Steven Spielberg's Peter Pan reboot, which uh, had, uh, because of Dante Basco's character, Rufio. Rufi. Oh. I, I was, like, hoping someone would do this, though. Thank you. I just, <laughs> okay. Um, as kids, we didn't, really, we didn't consciously seek out these movies because they had brown people in them, but we gravitated toward them because they were the closest thing we had to superheroes that looked like us. Go to the next image. There you go. So there's, there's a story that for the filming of the last Star Trek movie with the original cast, George Takei pushed for his character Sulu to captain his own ship, despite that decision meaning that the actor would get less screen time. The decision bewild bewildered his castmates like Bill Shatner because Takei would presumably get less money to captain a fictional imaginary ship. But for me, this decision made a lot of sense, and to see a captain who kind of looked like me really mattered a lot for a little kid. 
Uh, you can go to the next image. Um, and of course, if you've seen the latest trailer for the new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery, I had a very similar reaction as did others. Swapna Krishna, a writer for who covers science fiction, writes of her reaction to Michelle Yeoh's character, the captain of the new series. Krishna was struck by the very first line spoken by Yeoh's character in the trailer, bursting into tears. Why, she, she asks, because Michelle Yeoh's, Michelle Yeoh kept her accent. She continues, as a young girl of color, Star Trek was the first place I can remember seeing myself represented. Through characters like Uhura, Sulu, and Geordie LaForge, I saw people that looked a little like me, that shared the first thing people noticed about me, a darker skin color, and for the first time understood that I could achieve anything, even serve on a starship. I and, other, and people who look like me existed in this future. So here I am, computers and writing, Finlay, Ohio, June 2nd, 2017, and it's Friday night. I'm standing in the back of the banquet hall as I watch the award winners of the Hayward and Self Awards speak prior to the award ceremony. I hold up my thumb and hide the speakers behind it, and I wonder whether I, when I look around the room, if I see people who look like me. Thank you. <laughs>